All right, welcome back to Honors Calculus. In this video, we are talking about intercepts, extrema, and asymptotes. All of these are topics that we have discussed previously, so there's not really anything new in this video. It's just a matter of trying to bring everything together all in one place. And so let's just dive right into an example. So let's think about the equation y equals 2x over the square root of x squared plus 2. So we can think about domain. That's always something interesting to worry about, especially when you have a fraction or a radical going on. And we have both of those here, All right? So our radical underneath is x squared plus two, All right? x squared is always going to be positive or at least non-negative. Add two to that and that will always be positive. So we don't have to worry about taking a square root of a negative number or dividing by zero. The domain here is in fact all real numbers. All right, the y-intercept is the easier of the intercepts to find. That's the point where x is equal to zero. And in this case, it's going to give us that y is equal to two times zero over the square root of zero squared plus two, which is zero over the square root of two, which is just zero. All right, so the y-intercept is the point zero, zero, which is also an x-intercept. It may not be the only one. So we can always check that as well. Intercepts are the places where y is equal to zero. So we set zero equals two x over the square root of x squared plus two, which is the same thing as saying that two x is equal to zero or x itself is zero, which gives us that there is exactly one x intercept. It's the point zero, zero. All right. The domain is all real numbers, so we don't have to worry about vertical asymptotes. But horizontal asymptotes always could be a thing as well. All right, there's no vertical asymptotes, but we can check the horizontal asymptotes. by taking the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x over the square root of x squared plus 2. And if we try plugging that in directly, we're going to get infinity over infinity, which is definitely an indeterminate form. I will notice that as x goes to infinity, that means that x is positive. So x is equal to the square root of x squared. And so I can divide in the numerator and in the denominator by x in the form of the square root of x squared. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x over x divided by the square root of x squared plus 2 divided by the square root of x squared. So that's the limit as x goes to infinity of two over the square root, x squared divided by x squared is one, two divided by x squared is just two over x squared. And as x goes to infinity here, we are going to be left with two over the square root of one plus two over x squared is going to go to zero. One plus zero is one, the square root of one is one and anything divided by one is that thing. So the value here is two. All right, so the end behavior as x goes towards positive infinity will take us to two, but it doesn't have to be symmetric. So we should also test the limit as x goes to negative infinity. 
of 2x over the square root of x squared plus 2. And if we try taking the limit here, we'll again end up with infinity over infinity, which we know is an indeterminate form. All right. But here, because we're looking at the limit as x goes towards negative infinity, x is a negative number, which means that x is going to be the opposite of the square root of x squared. So when we divide here, the limit as x goes to negative infinity, we're going to have 2x over x divided by the negative of the square root of x squared plus 2 divided by the square root of x squared which would be the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative two over the square root of one plus two over x squared. And that's going to give me negative two over the square root of one plus zero, which is just negative two. All right, so. Summarizing what we have so far, sketching in my coordinate axes, I know that at x equals 2 and at x equals negative 2, we're going to have some asymptotes. We have our 0 here. The function is continuous everywhere else. So the function is going to go and do its thing. I don't know what it's going to look like but it's eventually going to taper off and come towards this. Our function is going to do its thing. I don't know what it's going to look like, but it's eventually going to taper off and come towards this axis. So what does it look like in these parts is still a question. That's still something we can work towards figuring out. And that's where knowing the extreme values will become helpful. So let's put a nice question mark and figure out some extrema. If we have that y is equal to 2x over the square root of x squared plus 2, then y prime, the derivative of the numerator, is 2 times the denominator, square root of x squared plus 2, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which will be 1 over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 2 times the derivative of that, which is 2x. I didn't write down the 2 because they cancel out, and we just have an extra x right there. That's all going to be over the denominator squared. Square root squared is just the thing inside, x squared plus 2. All right, so I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator of the big fraction here by square root of x squared plus 2. Doing that will clear out the complex fraction, make it a little bit easier to work with. So root x squared plus 2 times root x squared plus 2 is x squared plus 2. And then we have 2x times x, which is 2x squared, divided by root x squared plus 2 times root x squared plus 2. Those things cancel each other out, and that's all we're left with. And then we've got x squared plus 2 to the 3 halves power in the denominator. We can clean up a little bit here. Um, 2x squared plus 2 minus 2x squared is actually just 4. And that's actually kind of boring. The numerator is four, that's always positive. The denominator has that x squared plus two, which we already said is always positive, whether or not we put a negative in it or not. But with that, we can figure out what the rest of this function is going to look like. All right, so just redrawing some of the things we've already discussed. There's a horizontal asymptote at x, um, at y equals 2. There's a horizontal asymptote 
at y equals negative 2. There is one intercept at 0, 0, and the function is always increasing. So it's going to be along the horizontal asymptote. It's going to increase through the origin. It's going to taper off, and it's going to go along the other horizontal asymptote. How steep that is, how far out it spreads, I still don't know, but I know it's not going to do anything else weird. So I'm able to establish a pretty good picture of what this graph is going to look like just with those three facts, the intercepts, the extrema, and the asymptotes. I would like you to take a look at the function y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 all over x squared plus 1. You probably from a previous math course could figure out a rough idea of how to graph this just using intercepts and asymptotes. But thinking a little bit more about asymptotes doesn't help us here because this is the type of asymptote you learned before, but we can still use that same language. And then use the ideas of extrema that we have been talking about to take that one step further, find all of those things, try to use those to draw the graph, and if you so desire, go into Desmos or similar software to double check and verify your results from that. See what you can do with this function, and I'll see you in the next video.